Hi, fellow ruminators. Thank you another time for joining. Let's now talk about crime and violence in Jamaica. Now, we are hearing that, you know, we're waking up another morning to curfew in a section of Jamaica. Uh, let us look at the observer. The observer presented the information about a, um, you know, I'm always pulling up the observer here when the stories are off the screen. But yeah, we have woken up. Let me pull up the story. The story was here until it went. Let me see if I could, can go back on the observer side. But it's very interesting that we be, we've been having a problem with crime and violence and all we can talk about are curfews was on the major story here. I'm not pulling up that story this morning right now in the Jamaica Observer. It was here and yeah, curfew imposed in St. Andrew North Division. That's what this story was saying in the observer. Observer, right? Curfew imposed in St. Andrew North Division, Kingston, Jamaica, 48 hour curfew has been imposed in the sections of Eric Castle Road, Brooks, Level Road, and Stone Hill in the St. Andrew North Police Division. The curfew began at 6 p.m. on Friday, October 18th, and remained in effect until 6 p.m. on October Sunday. On Sunday, October 20th, Rob, the boundaries of the curfew are north along Golden Spring Road with an imaginary line across to Brook Level Road leading to the intersection of Eric Castle Road and Levi Terrace. And east, we have from the intersection of Eric Castle Road and Levi Terrace to the intersection of Eric Castle Road to Lis Lipscomb Avenue. Now, we're not going to go into the um, details, but during the hours of the curfew, all individuals within its boundaries are required to remain within their premises unless otherwise authorized by the ground commander. So curfews are the new ways of solving crime in Jamaica. And we have been having this discussion for many years now, almost maybe heading towards a decade in terms of curfews. Are curfews effective? Are they going to be the solution to solving our problems uh, in, with regard to crime and violence. I don't think so, but it seems to me that the government has decided, it is determined that they're going to use curfews as a long-term strategy in solving crime and violence and something that we should not be so much caught up in or with. But that is how the government has decided to do that. And I don't think the citizens have the, the rights to protest and to let the government understand that there should or ought to be other effective means of solving crime and violence in Jamaica. That problem has been longstanding, something that has been happening for decades since our independence, particularly the periods of the 70s and the 80s and onwards, you know. We know that it was it got out of control in the 70s, and I don't think since the 70s we have yet handled it well. We have gotten a lid on crime and violence. It continues to be unabated. But it's something that we need to talk about. It needs to be in the lingo every day. I don't think it is. We prefer to talk about development, but if we have a high crime rate, I do not see how we are going to be developed as a nation, how people are going to see us as a civilized nation, right? I think that we have to come to grips with these things. I don't think that we have, we can just sit back and say that, you know, we can just miraculously head into development. I don't think so. We've got to deal with the problem of crime and violence. It is cancerous. It is at a stage four level. Maybe we can't deal with it right now. Because, you know, a stage four cancer is almost impossible to deal with, right? It's almost an impossible task to cure a stage four cancer. Maybe we need to call on divine help. The, the problem with divine help is that we've got to also change our diet and our diet of being wicked, right? We are on a diet of wickedness. And that is why we see a high, the high levels of, crime and corruption in our country. These two C words, crime, corruption, and let me add an L word to it, and lawlessness. But crime and corruption lead to lawlessness. And if we do not deal with these problems, these challenges, these intractable challenges, I think that we are going to, we're heading for a land that is uninhabitable, just like what Haiti is. Now, one of the, as I mentioned, Haiti, I think what we should have done before we sent our troops 
to Haiti or security forces over to Haiti, which we shouldn't have done, by the way, because we do, you know, you can't say that your, your house is not clean, right? And then you're going to go to somebody else's house to clean it up. It's a sign of mental derangement, right? That's a sign of mental derangement syndrome, which Jamaica has been suffering from for many years, for, for decades, that our leaders do not have the capacity to lead. Right? They don't have the capacity. They lack the vision, and that's why they can't lead. But what we should have done, we should have kept our troops or security forces in Jamaica, and we should have manned our ports to see if we see any signs of guns and drugs coming into our shores. But instead of doing that, we have sent our troops over to Haiti, where I am not even sure what they're doing. I don't think they are going to be of any value to that community. We're just doing it because we're told to do it. Andrew Holders has done it because he's instructed as a slave boy in Jamaica House to do it. And he has to do it because that is how he gets his promotions and his, you know, international recognition that he is, you know, what should I say now, hungering after Instead of hungering after righteousness and right doing, Andrew Holness is hungering after international recognition, not understanding that the gals and the boys with whom he's running around with are just as corrupt and they're not, they're demonic for the most part. These are not people that you want to associate yourselves with. But we hunger as a people of African descent to elevate our status, to elevate ourselves and think that we're important on the world stage. But people like me who are persons who are not superficial and who believe in right doing and decency and civility will not regard you in any way because we study what is happening internationally. We look at what is happening on the geopolitical political landscape, and we understand that it is not a pretty side. It's a hideous side that we're looking at. And sometimes, you know, I really wonder when God sees what is happening behind the scenes. It's amazing that he stands up, but you know, God is bigger than anything that we can see or cannot see. I remember the verse that because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. The love of many shall wax cold. So people don't even respect each other anymore. They don't care about snuffing out the lives of their neighbors, even their own parents, their own children. That's also a sign of the times that children will kill their, their parents and parents, children will kill their, their parents, right? And parents kill their children. That is a sign of the times in which we live. And we are hearing of that. We're seeing these things of parents even sacrificing their children. We talk about abortion. We shall not talk about that in this on this podcast for today. But that is also a sin of the times. Parents have absolutely no sort of compassion, no sort of clemency for their own children. This is a sign of the times in which we live. And people think it's normal and people just think it's rights and you're talking about your liberty. That's not liberty. That is an inability to restrain your emotions. You lack self-control. And that is one of the signs of the time too. If you go to 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 to 5, go to 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 to 5 and look at the sins that the Bible has said would be very common, would be very prevalent in the last days. And one of them is incontinency, which means lack of self-control. You don't have the ability to control yourself. And there are times when people get emotional, when, you know, after somebody might, you know, might have gone through, undergone a traumatic experience such as incest or rape or some terrible things because we are living in a traumatic society and there are things that are going to happen to us. If you live long enough, you're going to go through some painful days and you've got to be able to control your emotions, to control yourself so that you can be able to go through and only Christ, only God will give you that sort of strength, the resilience 
to be able to withstand all of the challenges that you have to go through. So here in Jamaica, we, we, we it's obvious that people are going through lots of stress and they are very cold in terms of their heart, crude, crass, lacking any sense of civility, any sense of human compassion. That's why they can go and they can kill without any emotions. Another thing is a poverty. We or poverty is too high, and people are hungry, and because of that, they will do anything to satisfy their hunger. They will even kill. We have situations in which Jamaicans are renting guns, or guns are being rented to them, and they use them to kill. And they get paid to kill. Because that is also another industry that is very, very prominent in Jamaica. Do you think the politicians, in light of that, are going to really solve crime and violence when it is an industry, when it is entrenched in the cultural fabric of Jamaica? Do you think they are going to, do you really think they are going to solve crime and violence? I don't think so. Because many of these economic oligarchs are also enriched by this process. You know, you remember now we talk about the United States and the financial oligarchs there, and they send their weapons to Israel to kill moms and babies. And yet still, these same oligarchs will in the United States talk about women's rights and women should have the right to do whatever they want to do. Yet still, and they pretend as if they like women and they're wanting to protect and to secure the rights of women. At the same time, these same oligarchs, the same ones who are who control the New York Times and the CNNs and the MSNBCs and all these major news outlets, they are the ones who are behind sending the weapons to Palestine and Israel, well, to Israel to kill the Palestinians. What level of hypocrisy? But you will not see through that because all you care about is your little neck of the woods. You are not able to connect the dots to see that the same people who control a lot of the things, a lot of the bad things you're seeing happening around you are the ones who are coming to you and telling you that they are there to solve the problem when they are at the root cause of the same problem that you think they're about to resolve, that they're about to solve. Right? And this requires a lot of reading. It requires a lot of study and not study coming from the universities because the universities are not going to help you to connect the dots because the university is there to maintain the status quo. That is what they're there to do. And you don't have to tell me about the university. I taught there, saw the nonsense that happens there, saw that it's just a playground. It's not a place to empower you intellectually. University spaces are not to empower you academically. If you want to get a job and you want to function in this world, in this wicked world, yes, go there. I'm not saying you shouldn't go there because you need to work, right? And you have to take care of your family. So you have to fit in with the masses. But in terms of empowering you intellectually, a university is not going to do that because they're not geared to doing that. They're geared towards just helping you to fit in, uh, what do you call it now, in in, in and the lab, the laboratory. And the world is a grand, it's a big laboratory in which you have to work. And everybody behaves the same way. They say the same things. They think the same way. And at the end of the day, things do not change because people don't like change. They resist change. They resist anything that is different, right? And this is why we are having problems of crime and violence in Jamaica. But I was on Statista, and you have to see the levels of crime in terms of homicide in Jamaica. Let me share my screen with you and show you what Statista has to say on crime and violence in Jamaica. And they're giving the stats, as it were, of this monster called crime and violence. It's, it's, why is it taking a long time to share? I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, good. It's up now. So we have the, okay, I don't know why this is here and blocking my eyes. So we have 2014, our murder rate in Jamaica, 36.4 per 100,000 um, 
you know, people. So they, of course, the prime rate is measured per 100,000. Now we have in 2015 was 45 per 100,000 um, people. And then we have in 2016, it was 50. That was high, 50 per 100,000. Then in 2017, it was 55.7 per 100,000. 2018, 47. 2019, 47.4. 2020, 46.4. Then we have 2021, that's 2021, that was 49.4. And this was a pandemic. Still, crime was high in Jamaica. Even during the pandemic, 2020, 46.5. Crime was still high. It wasn't going down, even though people were locked down in their homes. Right? People were locked down in their homes because people were scared of a virus. <laughs> but marauding criminals were not afraid of snuffing out the lives of Jamaicans. And we have not been having a conversation about that, that the Prime Minister was so much wanting to protect the citizens from a normal virus, from a virus that could have been controlled, right? But uh, guess what? The crime and violence was not important because that's what Jamaica is all about killing its people without any sense of compassion and any sense of remorse. Nobody cares. Who cares? Yeah, just another person whose life has been snuffed out. That is the sort of Jamaica in which you live. And somebody wrote me a message yesterday um, in response to one of my videos. And, you know, he was saying very well written, thoughtful commentary about what is happening with the whole FinSAC um, release. And he was saying that, yeah, this is just another day in Jamaica. This is not this another day in my beloved Jamaica, he said. And I'm like, okay, just another day? Because we have become so much normalized. We have become so much accustomed to the lack of decency and the drama that is unfolding there that we don't care anymore. It's just another day of the drama. And we love the drama because it's like a soap opera where we love to see the drama, the days of our lives. And that is what we're seeing unfolding in that country. Now we have in 2022, it was 52.9 per 100,000. And last year, 2023, it was 60.9, 60 60.9 per 100,000 murders in Jamaica, right? Welcome to Jamrock, welcome to little nation with little book with Talawa. We'll look about with Tawa. And Andrew Holness has just received his PhD in whatever, criminality. <laughs> well, he I should say, I should say I'm sorry. He, he didn't receive his PhD in criminality. It was in law and public policy, right? Something of a sort. <laughs> but his dissertation was on criminality and the flow, the inflow of drugs and, and guns into, into Jamaica. And my question to him, my question to Andrew Paul is, you know, what is your solution? What did you learn? What did you learn from your studies at the University of Boston? What did you learn? Was it Boston? I, I can't remember. One of those universities in Boston that he did his PhD, uh, um, his PhD at. Um, so that is what, but so if you look now at the Garden newspaper, the Garden newspaper is actually confirming that Jamaica did have a, a homicide rate of 60.9 last year in 2023. Let me share my screen with you. And I'm going to go exactly to where the garden is citing that sort of statistics, right? So we have here, um, Jamaica declares state of emergency after eight killed in weekend shootings, two attacks in Clarendon, killed eight and injured nine as government looks to focus on gang violence. So the government is going to focus on gang violence while, you know, it has a problem. It's sending its troops to Haiti to tackle gang violence. We have not been able to tackle and to control gang violence since, 19, in the, since the 1970s, but we're going to send our troops to Haiti to control their gangs. <laughs> make that make sense. Make that make sense. Is that a rational decision? And this is coming from a guy who says he has just acquired a PhD. <laughs> this is something that is amazing 
where is the ability to think? Where is that ability to think? It means, therefore, that all of these titles mean absolutely nothing if you do not read, if your minds are not properly trained. So this is what the, the, the Guard newspaper is saying. Last year, a study by Inside Crime ranked Jamaica the second deadliest country in the Latin American and Caribbean region. Let me repeat that. Last year, a study by Inside Crime ranked Jamaica the second deadliest country in the Latin American and Caribbean region. Maybe I should title my video like that. Yeah, this should be the title of the video. With 60.9 homicides per 100,000 people, second only to the small island of St. Kitts. I did not know that St. Kitts had such a high crime rate, right? And Holness noted that while the number of gangs estimated to be active in the country had shrunk, from 400 to 185. So they always give us these stats that they, the, 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 the gangs have shrunk and our debt has gone down. <laughs> but guess what? Poverty continues. Poverty continues unabated, even though our debt to GDP has shrunk, has gone down. And people believe them because the minds have not been developed. You have to look at what is happening around you. So even though we might have reduced 400, the gangs from 400 to 185 in five years, the figures remain very high. Why? Because sometimes when you sh when one is shrunk, even though they have been reduced, the gangs have been reduced, they collaborate and they come together. So that is what they perhaps are doing. I'm not saying that's what they're doing, but it seems that that is what they're doing. So while they're shrinking from 400, the gangs have shrunk from 400 to 185. We're not going to argue with that. But what we're going to say is that if the gangs have shrunk, there should be also a significant reduction in crime and violence. Or maybe the ones who have been taken out of business are the ones who are not even a great threat. We're not posing a great threat to the state. But the ones who have been made to stay are the real ones who are posing the problem to the state. There are many factors that our sociologists should be um, analyzing. Instead, I think that they are talking about we're Africans, right? And we should wear our dashikis. <laughs> we're Africans, right? That's what they're going to talk about. We're Africans and we should be proud of our African heritage, you know, be remaining in poverty and killing each off, killing off each other and behaving like slaves and living on the plantation. We should be happy that we're living on the plantation. <laughs> that is really essentially what the University of the West Indies and the universities in Jamaica are saying. Be happy, be happy with your beloved paradise, with your beloved plantation. You should be grateful because on other plantations, things are not as rosy as the plantation in Jamaica because of our reggae music and our nice food and, you know, man can have fun, right? That is the Jamaica that we're living in. We don't care about the high homicide rate. When are we going to wake up? When are we going to wake up to understand that all we're hearing from our sense-making institutions, and when I say sense-making, I refer to the Gleaner to the Observer, to TVJs and to the CVMs, are just what they want you to hear and want you to see. They're not going to have, they're not going to delve into the problems, the real issues, the real problems that bedevil us as a people, as a nation. That is not what they're paid to do. They're just there to entertain you and to make you feel this false sense of patriotism. And what is there to be proud of, really? What is there to be proud of? When people visit that island, what is there to be proud of? You know, we're, we're so much caught up in our false sense of patriotism that recently, you know, an American, a transgendered man went to Jamaica and he said he went on a cruise. He, she, whatever, I don't know what. He or she identifies himself or herself as, right? There's a transgendered person. I'm not going to get into the whole, you know, name callings and so on. But he or she went there and said that the food 
in Jamaica is nasty. And there was an avalanche of criticisms on the, the internet. You know, Jamaicans attacking him. How can you say that Jamaican food is nasty? When we have one of the best cuisines, if not the best cuisine in the Caribbean, right? Who cares? Nobody cares. Only you care. These are the things that we need to get rid of. Food and music, we need to get out of that. Because if we can't create a space in which people see us and view us as a civilized people, then food and culture of music and bombarding does not matter to them. They might love it for, yeah, it's, it's transitory. It's, it, it's, it's, it's something that is a short-term sort of enjoyment. But it's not permanent. Right? And things like crime and violence are things that turn off people from going to any country. People don't like to visit countries that they know, you know, um, are plagued by crime and violence. They don't like to do that. But yet still, Mr. Honus wants to employ this agency that can, this PR agency that can promote Jamaica. Brand Jamaica, Jamaica to the world, while we're slaughtering, right? While we are busily slaughtering our people every day. This is the Jamaica to the world. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you would like and you share and you subscribe. Remember now that you have to like, you should like the videos so that the videos can be sent to, with, to as many people on the platform and that we can hear, people can listen to, can, people can begin to reflect, they can begin to cogitate on very important matters. See you in another one. All the best to you. Bye. Adios.